um hello everyone good evening so here we shall solve some more kct previous year questions on the chapter laws of motion so any doubts if you have then please write that in the comments section so we shall obviously clarify them in the subsequent videos and in any other chapter of physics if you have more more difficulty then please write that in the comments section so that we can give more priority on it and solve more and more questions on that chapter uh, also some important homework questions will be uploaded in the sapiens education application so please install our sapiens education application whose link has been provided in the description so here it is told that a coin is placed on a rotating turn table here a coin is placed and here is the center so it will rotate with an angular velocity omega then it will slip at a distance of four centimeter and if the angular velocity is if the angular velocity of the triple is double if it will just slip at a distance of so now therefore we can say that m omega square r that will be equal to mu mg when it will when it when it just slips when it just slips since why when it will just slip then uh, then maximum static friction will act so then r will be equal to mu g by omega square and when omega is doubled means omega will change to 2 omega then we can say that m m into 2 omega whole square into r will be equal to mu mg r dash we can say so here r dash will be equal to mu g by 4 omega square which is equal to r by 4 so here r is equal to means this value is 4 centimeter so therefore r dash will be r by 4 which is 1 centimeter so at 1 centimeter it will just slip if the angular velocity is doubled so option a is the correct answer then here it is told that two masses 5 kg and 3 kg are suspended with the help of a massless inertial strings and whole system is going upwards with some acceleration a then <clears throat> okay this is 5 kg 5 kg and this is t1 the whole system is going upwards then the value of t1 will be so this is going upwards with t1 and this is 5g and if you draw the free body diagram of the 3 kg block then it will be upwards it is t2 and like this it is okay like this also here it will be t2 this will be this will be 3g and this is acceleration so therefore here we can say t1 minus t2 minus 5g that is equal to 5a and t2 minus 3g that is equal to 3a so t1 has been asked to find so if we add these two equations then t2 will cancel out then we will get t1 minus 8g that is equal to 8a so therefore t1 will be equal to 8 into g plus a so 8 kg into g is 9.8 plus a a is 2 so this will be 8 into 11.8 uh, newton which is equal to 94.4 newton so option b is the correct answer then here it is told a car is moving on a horizontal track of radius <coughs> moves on a circular horizontal track of radius 10 meter with a constant speed 10 meter per second v a bob is suspended from the roof of the car is suspended from the roof of the car So then the angle made by the wire with the vertical is so here the car is in an accelerating frame so it is actually it has centripetal acceleration which is mv square v square by r so here pseudo force will act so on the bob there is tension force and it is making angle theta with the vertical and this is m into ac where m is the mass of the bob and this mac is the pseudo force which is acting on the 
Bob, since it is in a non-inertial frame, in an accelerating frame, so pseudo force will act and mg is acting vertically downwards. Then we can take the components of the tension force. So this will be T sin theta. This will be T cos theta. So therefore, since the, the bob is in equilibrium, so we can say T cos theta will be equal to mg and T sin theta will be equal to m into ac. Now this pseudo force of the centripetal force that is uh, so this is also called as the centrifugal force which is acting on the bob. So T sin theta will be equal to m into v square by r. So therefore if we divide these two equations then we will get tan theta that is equal to v square by rg. So this will be equal to v square 10, 10 into 10 divided by r is 10 and g is also 10. So tan theta is 1, so theta will be equal to pi by 4 rad pi by 4 radians. So option D is the correct answer. <coughs> Here it is told two equal forces are acting. P each are acting at an angle of 120 degree with each other. Okay, this is one force P and this is another force P. They are acting at an angle of 120 degree. The magnitude of the resultant is. So therefore, the resultant force that is equal to the square root of P square plus P square plus 2 P square cos 120. So this will be root over 2 P square plus 2 P square into cos 120 means minus 1 by 2. So this is root over p square which is also equal to p. So p is the resultant. So option 1 is the correct answer. The adjacent figure in the is the is the part of horizontally stretched net. Section AB is stretched with the force F, force of 10 Newton. The tensions in the sections B, C, and BFR. <coughs> now this is the force we can say F, F is equal to 10 Newton. Now this is acting, this is suppose F1 and this is suppose F2. So you have to find out the tensions in BC and BF. So BC is F2 it means let's say this is f1 this is f2 so f1 and f2 we have to find and uh, so this angle is 120 degree this is also 120 degree so this angle also will be 120 degree so therefore we can use the sign rule that is equal to f1 by sine 120 that is equal to f2 by sine 120 that is equal to f by sine 120. So sine 120 I can cancel. So f1, f2 and f are same. All are same. So it means f1 is also equal to f2 which is equal to 10 Newton only. So option 3 is the correct answer. Then here it is told a uh, student unable to answer answer a question on Newton's laws of motion attempts to pull himself up by tugging on his ear. He will not succeed as the force applied is internal to the system and uh, okay, uh, as the force applied is the internal force. So the net external force on the student is zero so the force which he is applying on his hair that is the internal force so since internal forces will always cancel 
according to the newton's third law reaction force is always equal and opposite to the action force so when he pulls his hair then the the hair is also applying an equal and opposite force on his hand so the net force is net force on the system will be zero only so since the force is in, internal so he will not succeed so option 4 is the correct answer then here it has been told that um, Uh, a body of mass 10 kg is kept on a horizontal surface. The coefficient of kinetic friction in, in between the body and the surface coefficient of friction is 0 0.5. A horizontal force of 60 Newton is applied on the body. The resulting acceleration of the body is about. So the resultant acceleration we have to find. <coughs> Acceleration is equal to net force by mass. So now the maximum static friction force, maximum static friction, or I can say the limiting friction that is equal to mu mg, since the normal reaction is equal to the mg, is equal to the weight. So this will be 0 0.5 into 10 into 10 is 10. So this is 50 Newton. So 50 Newton is the friction, is the maximum static friction. The applied force is 60 Newton. So obviously the block will, will move. The net force will be F minus, F minus the kinetic friction. And kinetic friction we can take it is approximately same as the maximum static friction. So this divided by the mass. So this will be F which is 60 minus 50 divided by uh, 10. So this will be 10 by 10, which is 1 meter per second square. So option C is the correct answer. So hope all of you understood the solutions of these questions based on the previous year KC takedown. Uh, still any doubts if you have, then please write that in the comments section so that we shall obviously clarify them uh, and please install our sapiens education application also where we shall upload some important questions based on the previous year case you gave this shall be helpful for your exam thank you everyone bye